Hi everyone, we are going to start um, the second part of 6.3 and our objective is to prove that a set of points forms a parallelogram in the coordinate plane. So this is where we have to use the distance formula, the slope formula, and midpoint formula. In this video I am not going to show you the midpoint formula again because um, we learned that in the last video. So we're just going to focus on the distance formula and the slope formula. The really nice thing about these problems is that um, the book tells you how to, um, how to justify your answer. So for example, in this one we're going to use the distance formula. Now we're going to use the distance formula and the theorem states that both pairs of opposite sides have to be congruent. So we're going to use the distance formula to prove that, to show that, that both pairs are congruent to one another. So I always like to start out with graphing this um, parallelogram, or this quadrilateral, if you will. So why don't you pause the video and go ahead and graph these in your notebook. All right, so you should have this graphed in your notebook. And we are going to show with the distance formula that we have to show that AB right here is congruent to DC. So with AB, let's find the distance. So we have, um, let's use 8 minus 3, quantity squared, plus uh, 2 minus 3, quantity squared, going to end up being 5 squared plus uh, negative 1 squared, which is going to be 25 plus 1 is going to be the square root of 26. Now let's look at DC. And you should have the distance formula written down in your packet. We did that in class today. Uh, let's see here, so DC is going to be 6 minus 1 quantity squared plus uh, negative 1 minus 0 quantity squared. So we have 5 squared plus a negative 1 squared. 25 plus 1 is the square root of 26. Alright, so we know that these two are congruent. Now we have to use uh, or C if AD is congruent to BC. So let's find the distance of AD. And with AD, we're going to have 3 minus 1 quantity squared plus uh, 3 minus 0 quantity squared. I kind of sound like a broken record. Sorry about that. So then we have, it looks like 4, uh, let's see, so we have 2 squared plus 3 squared. And that's going to be 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 13. Hopefully we get the same thing so we can prove that these two are congruent. So BC, we're going to get, um, let's see here, 8 minus 6 quantity squared plus 2 Minus the negative 1, so that becomes plus 1 quantity squared. So we end up with 2 squared plus 3 squared. 4 plus 9, hey, what do you know? We get those. We get square root of 13, which is what we wanted. All right, so then we know that since AB is equal to DC and AD, is equal to BC. We have opposite pairs um, are congruent to one another. So both opposite sides. So then we can say A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. And that's by theorem. It's 6.9 in your packet. Okay, so that's using the distance formula. Now let's use the slope formula. So I want you to go ahead and um, copy this down and graph in your notebook. 
All right, so with the slope formula, we have to show that these opposite sides are parallel to one another. So in order to be parallel to one another, they have to be, um, they have to have the same slope. So let's look at, let's find the slope of AB. So the slope of AB is going to be 5 minus 4 over 4 minus a negative 3, which ends up being plus 3. So we have a positive 1 7. So we want AB to be parallel with DC. That's what we want. So let's look at the slope of DC. Let's see if they're going to be parallel. So DC is going to be, um, let's have negative 2 minus a negative 1, which becomes plus 1. And then we have negative 2 minus 5. So we have a negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. Negative 2 minus 5 is a negative 7, which ends up being 1 7. So these two are parallel to one another because it is the same slope. Now the same thing needs to happen with AD and BC. They have to be parallel, okay? Because a parallelogram, both pairs are parallel to one another. So AD, let's look at the slope for AD. Um, it's going to be a negative three minus a negative two, which becomes plus. And then we have, um, it's going to be, oh, did I mess that up there? Negative three, yep, I sure did. Let me erase that. So it's going to be, let's see, okay, so we have four minus a negative two, and then a negative three minus a negative two. Okay, let's try that. So four minus negative two is going to be a positive, so it's going to be six. And then we have a negative three plus two is a negative one, so a negative six is our slope. Um, and now let's look at, it has to be con or, um, same slope with BC. Let's see if we'll get the same thing. So with BC here, let's have 5 minus a negative 1. And then we're going to have um, 4 minus 5. So 5 minus a negative 1 is 6. 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. We're going to get negative 6. Awesome. So they are the same. So we can say parallelogram ABCD or ABCD is a parallelogram. And, man, I wish parallelogram was a smaller word, shorter word, way smaller to write. Is a parallelogram by definition of a parallelogram. And I'm going to abbreviate that. So the definition of a parallelogram is saying that both, um, both sides, both pairs of sides, opposite sides, are parallel to one another. All right? So watch this over again. As many times as you need to, I know it's a long video, I'm sorry, there's just, it's, I mean, it's all stuff we've done before, um, we just have to make sure we're careful with our negatives and whatnot. All right, enjoy, come with questions tomorrow, uh, there's no question at the end of this video, so I'm just going to be looking for your notes. All right, have a wonderful evening, bye guys.